Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Way back in the ancient days of 1985, I was tormented by a complete tool named Jimmy who was one grade above me in high school in a small town where everyone knows everything about you and who said what. He was a redneck who hung out with similar losers who liked chewing tobacco. One day, he thought it would be fun to use my backpack that was hanging on the back of my chair as his spit cup. I was furious, but with his gang of cretins, there was nothing I could do about it. At least not until he turned 18 and haven't graduated yet. In school, I heard him brag into his friends that he stole some mail from the post office by reaching into his P.O. box and grabbing the mail in the adjoining boxes. He bragged that he got someone's social security check and cashed it, using the money to buy some Coors beer. Well, my friend's mother worked at the post office and I let her know and to keep an eye out. Sure enough, a couple of weeks later he got caught. The mailman inside saw his scrawny arm reaching in and just grabbed him by the wrist and pinned it at a 90 degree angle trapping his arm until the police showed up. He ended up not finishing school while in jail awaiting trial and going to prison for the better part of a decade. Further investigation by the FBI because it is a federal crime got some of his jerk friends caught up as well. I moved away right after high school and never went back. But before I left, I made sure everyone knew I tipped them off. My name is Mary, and my son Jimmy was a happy-go-lucky kid who loved to swim. He had been practicing for months and was eager to participate in the upcoming practice race. But everything changed on the day of the race. As Jimmy was getting ready for his race, a woman named Karen approached him. This upcoming part is from what my kid told me. Karen? Hey you! Yeah, you there! Get over here! Jimmy approaches Karen. Yes? Can I help you? Karen aggressively, you can help by getting out of my son's way. He needs to win this race. Do you understand? Jimmy surprised. I don't understand, it's just practice. Karen angrily, just a swim practice? Do you really have any idea how important this is for my son's future? He needs to win, no matter what it takes. Jimmy confused. But what does that have to do with me? Karen sneering, everything. If my son doesn't win, it will reflect poorly on me and my family. And I won't stand for that, so you better get out of his way. Or I'll make sure you do. Jimmy frightened at this point. How are you going to do that? And Karen grinning evilly. Let's just say you'll regret ever standing in my son's way. Then she pushes Jimmy into the pool. She kept kicking his hands off the sides of the pool every time he attempted to get out of the pool. I was in the bathroom and when I came back, I saw lots of people surrounding Karen at the edge of the pool. I was in shock when I found out what had happened. People held Karen back while the officials and I quickly intervened, pulled Jimmy out of the water and reassured him that he was safe and covered him in a thousand towels. You'll pay for this, you witch! I screamed at Karen. Someone call the cops! I screamed at no one in particular. How could a mother do such a thing to a child? They immediately called for medical assistance and called the cops. As a result of her actions, the consequences were severe. Karen was arrested and I pressed charges. She was taken into custody and held pending trial. Her son was banned from ever competing again due to his association with his mother's actions. In their own words, the swim committee determined that he was not suitable to participate in any future competitions as he was seen as being connected to a dangerous individual. Karen's actions had far-reaching consequences, not only for her son but also for herself and her family. They were forced to deal with the shame and embarrassment of her actions, as well as the legal and personal consequences that came with them. 
I was a little jerk to my 6th grade teacher in Catholic school. It was her first year teaching and I pushed her limits every day. It was not my proudest year in school. On the last day of school, I squirted her with a squirt gun. Her eyes turned to violence. She grabbed me by the back of the neck and she hissed, Come with me. She marched me out of the class and down the hall. I was terrified, thinking I was going to be taken to the principal's office. An old nun we all feared and called the goose. She marched me right up to a drinking fountain, forced my head into it and turned on the water. She held my head there, soaking my hair thoroughly, then marched me back to class by the neck, still dripping. When she brought me into the classroom, my fellow students all laughed at me. I deserved it. This happened before the water issue from what I recall. Background, years before the issue neighbor moved in, we had signed the lease agreement that included we had exclusive use and care of the yard. We lived in an upstairs slash downstairs duplex and had the downstairs. It was common for upstairs apartments like this to have no yard rights in lease. We allowed the previous tenants to use our things and would let her have her had she not been such an issue and rude. Her kid did not live with her and was there on average one day a week. This neighbor was under the impression if they could see it, it was shared, including things in my house. Our upstairs neighbor moved in late fall. We used our yard year-round and still had fully legal fires in the winter. Around spring, she started bothering the manager about it. She wants to use the yard and we won't let her. And her kid keeps asking and we are telling her kid no. I was shocked. We had never talked to the child at all, nor her about the yard. And the manager had not brought it up to us. Plus, I am not a monster. The kid could play in the yard without asking. I heard her saying this outside very loudly on the phone. We tried working things out through the manager. Went through different options. Her slash us. Front yard slash backyard split. Front, left sides and 70% of backyard slash small walkway access out our back door to right side yard. All a big fat no. Neighbor did get their own fire bits after they were told they couldn't use ours and threw a fit about it, but failed to pay attention to safety guidelines. This included having a 6 feet plus fire 5 feet from our duplex. 911 was not cold but should have been. We were not home at the time. Also, video of her and her friends laughing about how it's about to go up and how they have no water to stop it. And laughing harder about how it could burn the house down. Luckily, our dogs and us weren't home at the time. At this point, the daily harassment was insane. She stomped so hard she broke a window in our unit under her stairs. My dog started ripping his hair out from stress because of the non-stop impact noise. We later found out it was a basketball upstairs. We moved our dogs out for their health and safety. Then it was pity revenge. We removed everything we owned from the yard. The fire pit, the patio chairs, tables, firewood, horseshoe pits, down to our rocks, everything. Only left what we did not own which was nothing but a yard. Most of our stuff we gave to our next door neighbor. Then we told the manager she can have the exclusive use of the yard and all that comes with it. The care slash landscaping. Manager was more than happy to get her off her back about yard use and asked when we would be giving her the key to our lawn mower. I laughed and said no, she can't use my mower. Even if I did let her, she wouldn't do it. That's your problem now. If I can't use a yard without being harassed, she might as well have it. This is on you. Eventually, they got the point and hired someone to care for the lawn as there was no way she would, even if she had a mower. We had doorbell cameras at this time that covered our back door and backyard, as well as the front yard. She used the backyard once to drag her baby in circles around the house. Once she saw all our stuff was gone, and she couldn't use it, she was pissed and never used a yard again. Turns out, she didn't want a yard. She wanted the stuff we owned in a yard.
Okay, so this is a strange one that I got reminded of while doing my taxes. It's amazing what you can remember when you have a good memory and moments that are seared in your brain. So it was about 8 years ago when I was working at a Burger King. A guy walked in in the middle of a lunch rush, ordered his food, got his receipts and then immediately called me over and started yelling at me. Hey you, what's this? He shoves his receipt in my face. That's your order, sir. Is something missing? You're damn right something's missing. My rights are missing from this. I demand a refund for the excessive tax on here. You're joking, right? That's put on automatically on everything in the UK. There is no way to do that. Get your manager now. I want to make a complaint about this. So after a small back and forth in which I'm trying to get him just to let me serve others and drop the issue, I finally relented and got the manager who we will just call Jay. I explained the situation and then I tried getting him to drop it as it was busy enough and I hoped to not bother Jay with this as it's insane. Jay said that he understood and appreciated the effort but he would take over for me. So Jay came out and took over dealing with this guy. I was on the far inside so I was able to hear everything. I want him fired. He said without missing a beat. Why? What did he do? Jay asked, a bit confused. He refused to remove the cost of the vat when I told him to. I'm not going to pay for your taxes. That is your choice to do. I refuse to submit to your government tyranny through taxation. After hearing this, I have put the insanity together. And fortunately for the restaurant, it was dying down. Yep, he was arguing with me and my manager so long that the lunch rush on a Saturday afternoon had dissolved. I asked if I should get the food or refund his meal, as he'd refused earlier for me to get his food and dismissed his complaint until he gets his refund. That was 30 minutes ago. I ask, should I have his food remade, boss, or should I start on other stuff? I ask Jay, you should start going home. You're going to be fired by the end of this. You and your allegiance to the tax man. He butted in. Jay says, stay close and just sort out the coffee machines. Check the milk levels and stuff, you know the drill. Why is he still here? I want to have him tax us good people your taxes just so you don't have to pay them. Where is your boss? Jay tells him, in the Caribbean on holiday. He answered, which he actually was. Don't know why he told him where to find him but I'm sure that he was safe. Get him on the phone now. He demanded. I was thinking, holy crap, you want to make a long-distance phone call to a boss on holiday just to have us fired because of your insanity? I say, sorry boss boss, I have to butt in here. You want him to fire me because I put the vent on, despite that's what the tills do automatically with every till in the country and likely the world? Then you want him fired for not firing me quickly enough and you want him to call his boss who's on holiday to get that done? If I was called on my holiday with the power to fire someone, unless the place was burning down, I would fire that person. Do you do this in every place you go to or did you suddenly just decide to make our lives difficult? The guy genuinely thought about it for a moment before answering, I have to make a stand somewhere. Jay tells him, you have been arguing this for over 30 minutes and you have decided to do this for what reason? He yelled. You could tell he was pissed. Boss, he is not worth it. Just refund him his meal and then throw him out. He is not worth a damn. After all this trouble, I want my food too. And it better all be fresh. Jay then pulls me to one side and tells me to refund his meal, but don't give it to him. Just make it look like I'm getting it until the shopping center security personnel got to the store to get rid of him. So I went back to the till and proceeded to rack up the refund while Jay Cold security as instructed. This guy had a really smug look as I put down fresh fries. As I pull up the fries, security shows up and I point out the entitled guy. As security approaches him, he is shocked. I'm not going anywhere until I get my food. I immediately walked over to enjoy the look on his face when I told him the cold hard facts. Buddy, I'm not going to give you any food. We just knew that you wouldn't shut up until it looked like we complied with you. We also knew that you were a complete blank, so not able to work out our simple ruse. 
I gleefully explained. The wheels in this guy's head were clearly starting to catch fire because I think that I blew his mind with my display of mild intelligence. I demand that you honor my rights as a free citizen of this country. I want my food. He suddenly exclaimed, as if it would suddenly change his situation. No. Now we've been more than generous with our patients dealing with you, and now you're going to leave with them, or I will get the boss to press trespassing charges against you and suggest someone do a tax audit on you. I told him so. Not gonna lie, I felt like I was playing in boss mode right at that moment. The high point of dealing with any difficult customer is always a moment when security shows up and you can just tell them to get lost without caring any longer. I won't have this, he said stomping his feet like a freaking toddler. The security guard says, sir please, this is getting silly now, how about we discuss this in the office, he said trying to just get the guy to leave. You'll help me take care of all of this? He asked, thinking that he found an ally. Sure, why not? Just follow me and I'll take care of it. The guy insisted. Alright, I'll come with you. He said calmly. The guy actually left with the security guard. So later on, the security guard came in for food and Jay gave him a free meal so he could hear the story. So apparently this guy stayed in the security office arguing the toss with him for nearly two hours before finally relenting and going. It took three levels of management to come in before he couldn't get any higher without getting the owner of the shopping center to come in. But eventually he left and no one was fired because of what he said. My advice to him is never do this again because your insanity is greatly hated and you're simply an idiot. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.